Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you to the Raphael. And we have a very exciting guest today, the director uh, behind a new documentary. It's Stage, the Culinary Internship. Uh, a great story, compelling story. If you're a foodie or not a foodie, you'll become one by watching this. Get your questions ready. Ladies and gentlemen, let's say good afternoon to Director Abby Ainsworth. Abby, good afternoon to you. Uh, and thank you for spending time with us today. How are you? I'm great. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much for having me. This is really nice in my own home. Never done one of these <laughs> from my apartment. But uh, yeah, considering the circumstances, this is uh, really nice to do this. So um, yeah, thanks, Liam. <laughs> Abby, I have to ask you, did you direct the set today? I'm looking around. Yes. I, see some great <laughs> art. I see a lovely plant hanging there. So good job on that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, my mother's, some of my mom's artwork my mom was actually a set designer in uh, Toronto for the CBC, yeah. so, yeah. Well, props to mom. Let's okay. talk about the film. <laughs> Stage, uh, the culinary in uh, internship. Uh, the restaurant mm -hmm. is Mugaritz in Spain. Uh, how did the project come to be? Uh, and for mm -hmm. those uh, who don't know about Mugaritz, uh, this three Michelin star restaurant, one of the most difficult reservations on the planet. Uh, <laughs> so how does this project come to you and, and tell people a little bit about the restaurant? Sure, so I was working in the restaurant industry about 10 years ago um, and I was a food writer and photographer at the time and I would see my friends who were cooks and they would go and stage outside of Canada because unfortunately we don't have any Michelin star restaurants in Canada. The guy doesn't come here for some reason. And so they would stage at the Fat Duck in London, uh, Mugaritz in Spain, um, Per Se, uh, French Laundry. So they would go across the world and instead of going on vacation and spending their money on a beach vacation, they would work for 15 hours a day. And I thought that was kind of crazy. They would actually pack their knives in a kit and take it with them on their backs. Um, so I just thought it was amazing to see them come back and open their restaurant saying, staged at Noma, staged at the Fat Duck. Um, it's like an accolade, it's like going to Harvard. And I thought the general public didn't really know about this. Um, and just thought it was an amazing story of someone who really wants to pursue their dream and be the best of their craft. Um, so that's how it kind of came about. And then I always had the idea and then got a broadcaster on board, um, did a couple of rounds of development to try and find where we were actually going to film it. And Mugaritz came about that it was really like no other restaurant. Um, some restaurants are just picking herbs and peeling carrots. They get their stagiaires to do the grunt work. And then at Mugaritz, they give them responsibility. They're in charge of their stations. They have to be there for a year. It's like a culinary school. So we really thought, okay, this is an amazing place to see a transformation of these young chefs. And that's what I loved about this. You know, when I, when I just saw a little line or two uh, next to, as a de descriptor of the film, at first I thought I was going to walk into Hell's Kitchen because we know how intense Mission Star Kitchens can be. And what I loved about this, it was everything but Hell's Kitchen. Uh, you got the order uh, of the restaurant. You got the quiet. You got the concentration, the focus. Uh, it's a very special kind of restaurant. It's three Mission Stars, and it's a tough reservation for the very reasons of, A, the food is amazing, but also what's incredible and why people want to work there is because how they how they treat their staff. And that's part of the discovery. They treat them and the interns, they treat them very well. Yeah, and I mean, as you touched upon the food, I think that was another really big draw for us, why we wanted to film there. They're not just making, you know, steak or hamburgers or something. They're making very out there, avant-garde food that would be very exciting for these stagiaires to learn about. Um, so it just it just fell yeah into place with uh, the restaurant. Um, let's talk about the chef before we talk about some of the characters in the film. Uh, he is the three Michelin star chef, uh, the quiet, humble chef. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about him. Uh, what did you sure. discover? And let's, let's tell the folks at home who he is. So his name is Andoni Ladriz Adwiz, and he is, yeah, he's two Michelin, so it's two Michelin stars, not three. Oh, two, um, sorry. Which... <laughs> I, just promo I just promoted him. I Maybe know. Maybe give me a reservation now. <laughs> um, and he is one of the most poetic and eloquent chefs I've ever met in my life. Um, 
and talking to him, you kind of fall into his dreamlike um, just talk. And he kind of creeps into the restaurant and creeps out. I mean, he's not there on the line all the time. He's the executive chef. He's out doing lectures. He's talking about science. He's, um, he does a uh, many number of things rather than just cook. Um, and what I really wanted to do was not make a film about him. I think we've heard that story. We've heard of where they've cut, you know, where he's, um, the glitz and glam of yeah. the chef, the top chef, the yeah. celebrity chef. And so I really wanted to show, you know, not Gordon Ramsay. I wanted to show where Gordon Ramsay got their start. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of hard to place him in the film because I didn't want to, again, make a film about him. But yeah. he is such um, an amazing and integral part of Mugger Eats and what they do there. Um, and the stages want to follow him like God. So of course he has to be in there. But um, yeah, he's, he, we, he kind of creeped in and out of it. Um, but our, most of the time we spent was with the stages. Yeah, and I Abby, mean, here's what I love. I love that he really sets the tone for the film uh, and for what we're about to see, because very early on he says, to come here is to discover about yourself that which you, you do not yet know, um, which I think uh, is a big part of the film, that voyage of discovery. This is a journey for each and every one of the interns and they discover if they've got it or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he went on that journey. I mean, he really comes from um, a small area in Spain um, and knew from such a young age, he wanted to be the, one of the best chefs in the world. And he would go to culinary school and then on weekends he would stage at a pizza place, work seven days a week, and he would pass by on his, he has a story about when he passes by on a bus ride by this Michelin star restaurant, always thinking like, I want to work there, I want to work there. And then one day he got a stage there. So it really all started with him staging and that's kind of where he built this stage program from. Lots of characters here to follow. Uh, let me ask you what it took out of you and your team. Uh, and I always love to know a little bit about behind the scenes. So yeah. how many people were part uh, of the documentary team and mm -hmm. how much time did you spend there in Spain? Uh, I'm hoping you spent the entire nine months. So what did it take <laughs> out of you? So it's a very small team. Um, producing partner, Lindsay Cutner and I um, are the ones from the beginning. So it's a two man team and then we had some executive producers, um, Cave Seven come on board to help out, um, and then a DP and a sound guy and our editor. And that's that's the dream team. Um, yeah. <laughs> and how often were you filming, Abby? I mean, oh, yeah. at, you, you covered, at least to us, you know, the viewer, that you mm -hmm. you cover the entire journey. How, how often were the cameras rolling? Uh, did you pick like a day or two a week? Uh, or did you pick certain weeks? Uh, talk mm -hmm. us through that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, to do it all over, I would love to live in Spain for the nine months. I think um, that was quite a challenge. You know, things would happen while I was in Toronto um, that were great stories, and then we couldn't capture them because by the time we get there, one of our characters might have left. And uh, so I went about six or seven times um, throughout the nine months, picking milestones of um, things that they go through, you know, obviously the beginning, the opening was very important to us. And then a month after that was also very important to see kind of like a check-in. And surprisingly, there were a number of them that had left at that point. Um, but yeah, it was difficult because also, you know, they're working and they're doing a job. They work uh, on their busiest days, they work lunch and dinner service. So they start at 8 a.m. and they don't end until 1 a.m. sometimes. So it to get them you know, why would they really want to be on camera during their off time and everything? So it was a bit of a challenge that way, but they were, they were such great sports about the whole thing and um, working how to maneuver the kitchen um, was, yeah, the behind the scenes is the film. <laughs> it should have made a film about the behind the scenes because it's, it's really interesting how it all went down. So let's, let's just <laughs> talk about the interns. Uh, so sure. 1500 apply. Uh, they they give how many the opportunity? 30. 30, and then it's yeah. whittled down to 10 at the very end. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So only 10 yeah. end up with a spot uh, to be part of the team that creates the menu for the following year. Um, tell me about, uh, obviously you can't name any of your favorites, but tell me about some of the characters mm -hmm. 
And who surprised you uh, while making the film? Um, great, great characters. Kim um, from Korea, just an amazing guy. I think, I think everyone really surprised us. There wasn't one story that we, we knew their ending, which was really amazing. I mean, Sarah came in, she was such the underdog. She was, um, you know, she just went to culinary school, changed careers from uh, being in graphic design. And by the end, she is um, teaching the other stagiaire. She's in charge of her station. She's running the show. Um, she, uh, more than any of the others, really kind of um, took the ideology of Mugaritz and really um, internalized that. And I think Kim, who we all thought, oh, he's definitely going to get into research and development. And by the end, he's thought, I, I lost myself. I don't even know who I am anymore. So yeah, it was really interesting seeing that. And also Powell from Poland was so, um, just so determined, but I don't think, you know, we didn't have enough time with him. He did leave quite early, um, but seeing him from the beginning, we all thought he would be to the end as well. But I mean, great for TV, he left and it does add a beat to our documentary. But um, the day we showed up was the day he was leaving. So it was so lucky um, that we caught him. Yeah, uh, I do love the diversity uh, in the documentary. Like all kitchens, there is diversity, uh, you know, from Poland to, uh, to Korea. Uh, you know, there was a, a mixed bag of applicants there. Uh, mm -hmm. So in terms of uh, the stories and how they ended, um, I'm not going to give anything away. I'm, I'm hoping, obviously, our friends who are logged on, hopefully with some questions in a few minutes. Um, they've, they've seen the film, but for those who haven't, uh, I was surprised by a couple of uh, the endings. There are people I thought were going to stay that, that did not. Uh, were you also mm -hmm. surprised there? Yeah, I think um, it's funny looking back and you see, okay, maybe there were some hints there here and there. Um, especially Alex. Um, I mean, if we don't want to give too much away, I won't say too much, but definitely surprised. And there's characters that didn't make it into the film that um, were so invested in it on day one and then a month later they're gone. Yeah. So it's not, it's, it's difficult. It's really not for everyone. Yeah. Um, and it takes a certain person to really go through that for the nine months. So nine months, six days a week, 18 hour days, uh, yeah. as you said, it takes a certain type of person, but from your observation, obviously you made mm -hmm. the film, what kind of person does it take to succeed in a restaurant and make it a chef uh, or just beyond a nine month internship at a restaurant like Two Mission Star Mugger Eats? Mm -hmm. Someone who is just, um, I think ego can't get in the way, especially in kitchens. Yeah. Um, that is one thing that um, if you have an ego, you're not going to last. Which is why I'm um, wearing this shirt. Yes, <laughs> yeah, chef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say, that. yes, chef, we chef, and you move on forward. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, and just someone who's very focused on their future. I think um, just like any profession, someone who really sees themselves as the best and knows that this experience, as hard and difficult as it is, will just get them there. Um, it's, it's that determination that just keeps them going. It really yeah. is, yeah. Uh, I love many moments in the film, uh, but one moment that stood out actually was a phone call uh, between a mother and one of the characters. Sarah, yeah. Sarah's mom, and there were just a couple of calls, and those calls really touched me because her mother was so supportive, and mm -hmm. anyone watching will watch that and go, wow, you know, to have the support and love of your family, that's a big part of this journey. To not have that would make this tough to do, right? Well, one of our characters, uh, Powell, he ha does have to leave because of family issues. Yeah. Um, he wasn't really, you know, um, completely explicit on what it was with us. So we kind of had to come up with our own um, conclusion of that but um you know kim also kim says kim and i have talked since he's seen it and he says my dad feels so bad that he, he said that he didn't support me when i first started to get into culinary because his dad is so supportive now yeah. but it is a really tough profession and you know you yeah. don't get paid that well and the hours are terrible so um i think sarah had such a love and support from her mother that we really wanted to show that uh, in the documentary well you know 
Abby, I, I hate to suggest this, but you left a lot of questions unanswered. I now want to know where <laughs> all those characters are going. What's happening next? I felt at the end that you just left us. I'm like, what? <laughs> what do you mean that's it? I mean, oh. we want more. So yeah. I have to ask that question. Uh, is there going to be a part two? Will mm -hmm. we, would you consider, or even are you, following the careers of some of those who actually survived the internship and are now doing great things? Because that, for me as the viewer, that's what I wanted to know. Where are they now? What's their story, the next story? That's really interesting. I ha hadn't thought of um, doing something with the Stodgers who are already in it, but you know, yeah, I could totally see that. Um, what we were more interested in maybe is serializing the show um, and going to different restaurants and showing how different it is because Mugrid Eats is just, it's yeah. its own thing. It is, um, yeah. But all the other restaurants, you know, a stage can be a week, it can be three months, it could be a day. Um, so it'd be really interesting to see how it's very different all over um, the world, really. Yeah. Uh, there's no one shoe fits all in the culinary yeah. world. You know, yeah. there is not one stew pot for every chef. Uh, it's different. <laughs> restaurant to restaurant, Michelin star to Michelin star. Uh, yeah. I think out of the gate, you got an exceptional restaurant with an exceptional team. Uh, with an exceptional chef at the helm. Definitely, yeah. I mean, as I said, yeah, it just it just checked so many boxes. Um, and even if you weren't making a film about the stage program, which obviously we wanted to do, the food program at Marguerite's is just its own thing. And so um, there's such a story to tell there as well. So last couple of questions. Sure. Did you get to have a full dining experience <laughs> at Muguritz and talk about the food porn, talk about the, <laughs> the experience yeah. for you, uh, for, for our viewers and friends watching, what was that dining experience about for you and how's it rate in your top five meals of all time? I mean, it was unforgettable, of course, because I was kind of trying to convince them to do the documentary with me and it was my first time there and I was sitting down for lunch and Jade, who's a character in the film, um, she had created the whole menu and she was sitting with me while I was eating this 30 course menu the whole time. And she's like laughing at me because, you know, I, they want you to feel uncomfortable. They want you to think of food in a different way. They don't want you to just say, mm, it's delicious. They want you to trigger a memory or, um, yeah, I don't know. They just want you to think outside your own comfort zone. And so there were some things that were delicious and amazing. And then some things that texturally made me squeam. Um, so it was, uh, but it's, it was, I mean, you ro go into the restaurant it's in the rolling hills of, um, you know, San Sebastian. So yeah. it's just, it's magical. It really is. Um, how, how tough is it to get a reservation there? It's, it's mm -hmm. three months out. Isn't that correct? Something like three to six months. Yeah. 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 Um, chef Adoni, uh, is a rock star chef. Uh, I actually got to host a panel with him and four other Michelin star chefs last year, including Dominique Crenn, uh, oh, right amazing. here in my backyard. Uh, and, he's intense uh, and also uh, he's got a great sense of fun uh, and that's what I got from his he food does, yeah. is he is serious about the work and you know the research and the development but he loves whimsy I mean he wants yeah. you to have fun uh, uh, when you come for a dining experience it's 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 a fun journey it's a fun culinary uh, journey having a, a, a dinner there right Definitely. They say that if you don't come in, there's two ways to go in the meal. If you come in open-minded, you know, you might not love everything, but you'll have a really good time. And if you come in very pessimistic and judgmental, you're just not going to have a good, you're not going to understand it. So um, they really want you to just, um, yeah, just kind of go in with uh, no inhibitions and no worries and yeah, just have a good time. Yeah. So Abby, uh, I want to invite our friends to, jump in the chat room sure get typing away put your questions to abby uh of course uh, friends if you've just joined us uh stage the culinary internship uh the restaurant muguritz in spain uh, chef adoni at the helm uh a great documentary that you're going to be able to see those who have not seen it yet uh, will still get to see it for some time here 
Um, so get your questions ready. We'll go into the chat room here in just a second. So Abby, uh, you're in Toronto has obviously because of our situation, you didn't get the, the movie theater experience. Um, uh, but is it, uh, available worldwide right now? It is. Yeah. On cargo collective is my distributor and they have a link, um, where it is worldwide, but it is playing, um, at the Rafael theater. And then it's also playing, uh, it's doing a fest. It's kind of doing a theatrical run in the U.S. right now, which is really great. Um, luckily, the film came out theatrically, or sorry, in the festival run uh, the year before. So we had a really great uh, theater run with it that way. Okay, so I'm hoping now we're going to get some questions here. So don't be shy, uh, folks. Any questions at all, jump in, uh, and Abby will answer them for you. Uh, let me ask you a few more questions, Abby. Uh, were, were there other restaurant, other other restaurants or chefs on your hit list uh, aside from Muguritz? What other places would you have loved to? What was there? Was there a dream restaurant? Was there was the one that you tried for that didn't happen? Uh, and, and what are your backups? Honestly, it was it was Muguritz or nothing, yeah. <laughs> and we had a broadcaster, so it was a bit stressful to feel like we ha we had to find a restaurant, yeah. and they didn't really want us to film something that could be in uh, full in Spanish. You know, yeah. I don't speak Spanish, so that was uh, a difficulty in itself. But um, there were some restaurants in the States, but uh, the way with internships, the labor laws have just completely changed as well for the better. Yeah. Um, so it was going to be somewhere in Europe um, where they, they house stagiaires. And I think that was really important for us too, so that um, it was kind of an all encompassing experience. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to see a TV show. If you don't do a follow up documentary and all yeah. our characters mm -hmm. ended up, uh, a TV show I think would just be fascinating. Uh, a lot of work, of course, that's a lot of production, uh, but there's such curiosity. Uh, as a filmmaker, obviously a journalist, um, what made you think that this was the right time to do this kind of film? Yeah, I think going back to what I was saying is I didn't want to make a film about the head chef. Yeah. Um, and I think that story is done well, you know, Netflix has, um, their shows and, um, I just thought that story had been told and I've done that, you know, I've done videos on that story too, before of the head chef, um, executive chef. And so I thought, um, with the rise of, uh, all the shows on Netflix, I think people are more understanding of what Michelin means. Yeah. Um, and I don't think the general public really knows that a lot of the work there is uh, this labor, um, but the exchange of it is just um, what I kind of wanted to show more of. It wasn't just the free labor aspect of it. It was this um, culinary school exchange. Mm. And Abby, if I may say, you know, I did love the diversity of the film. I also loved that there was a, a little bit of a focus on the sisterhood in the kitchen, because, you know, it's it's been a man's world for many years, uh, <laughs> yeah. but there are so many uh, rising chefs, um, you know, in terms of ethnicity, but also female chefs. Uh, and I love Dominique Crenn. Um, I mentioned her just a bit ago. Uh, I've joyfully uh, been friends with her for 15 years. And when she started to rise and she would be interviewed and people would say, oh, how does it feel to be the only female chef with a Michelin star? She said, I'm a chef with a Michelin star. Yeah. And I love that. Uh, yeah. And every, every time a journalist, you know, mentions that to her, she'll say, no, I'm a chef with three Michelin stars. The fact is Definitely. she's the only chef in America, female chef with three Michelin stars, but she's, I'm a chef first. And yes, I happen to be a woman. And yes, I, you know, uh, I'm an immigrant and, you know, she, she tells it like it is. Uh, and those Definitely. stories are so important. Uh, and there are many of those stories out there yet to be told. Yeah, I think definitely. And I think that's why we didn't, we touch upon it with Sarah, you know, she did feel like she had to inflate herself a little when her friend Ines left, but we didn't want to focus on that. And I think that in our documentary, we show Mafe and Jade, two very strong um, females in the film as lead roles. Yeah. So um, they really give an opportunity to everyone there. Yeah. I have to ask you, what did Chef make of the documentary? Did you get any feedback? Uh, has Chef Adani, has he seen uh, the documentary? And what was the feedback you got, if any? I haven't gotten much feedback on it, but I think they're happy with it. It's, it's very difficult to make a film that's not focusing 
it's hard to say, I want to make a film about you, but I want to focus on the bottom of the bottom and your interns. So yeah. I think um, they're very extremely proud of their stagiaire program. Yeah. Um, so I think that that is something that they're very happy to advocate towards. So um, when you're saying, yeah, what other restaurant could we film it at? I don't even know if another restaurant would allow us to film, you know, not focusing on their head chef, but focusing on their free interns, yeah. um, free labor force. So um, yeah, but I, they're, they're happy with it for sure. Um, and Abby, were you, obviously you had cameras, you had wide shots, you had time-lapse, you had all kinds of uh, different cameras capturing all the action. Uh, how often were you standing right next to the main camera uh, <laughs> and asking questions at all times? So if it was interviews, I was definitely right there by the camera. But if we were in the kitchen, it was a bit of a song and dance. I mean, our, you know, it's such a small kitchen. We don't want to get in the way. There's pots and plants, pans flying everywhere. So yeah. my camera guy, we figured it out by the third trip pretty, pretty much. So it was, he would have a walkie talkie in his ear and I would be by the sound guy who could speak Spanish. And so it was, it was difficult because we'd say, oh, I hear something with Sarah. By the time the camera swings to Sarah, it's, it's over with. Wow. So um, it was just, and they're so quiet in the kitchen. So you don't really know what, you can't really tell what's happening. So, mm. um, you know, I would come into the kitchen to my, to my camera guy and say, like, I think something's going to happen. I've heard Mafe say something about Sarah's dish that I think you should keep an eye on. So he would just focus on her for a good 10 minutes and then, nothing happened we'd focus on someone else and it was just this back and forth saying you know go to Powell I think he's gonna something's gonna fall or whatever it was so it, it was, it was pretty exciting yeah it's always the way it's like when you go whale watching and yeah. uh, you've got your camera you go whale and then you, right. you put the camera up and the whale's gone you know I know how that is right. um, so friends uh, any questions at all please jump in we have one for you thanks to Barbara M Ward so Barbara wants to know uh, where she can see the documentary now so so it is playing at the Rafael Theater um, for another week. Yeah. Um, so in the States, and then if you're not in the States, um, Cargo Collective has a Vimeo link to it um, where you can see it worldwide. Okay, uh, and just to let folks know, uh, it's uh, rafaelfilm.org. If you go to rafaelfilm.org, uh, go there and then that should have all the info you need uh, regards streaming, uh, so you can, you know, you can watch uh, in your own home uh, in comfort. Uh, so, Abby, next for you, any new projects? What's what's next on your plate? Um, lots of development, obviously, because we can't film right now. Yeah. Um, but I have been in development for a year and a half with a documentary that focuses on uh, mental health and addiction in the culinary industry. Wonderful. Which is, uh, yeah. Pretty, it's, it's a pretty big topic to talk about um, with an industry that uh, can be pretty toxic. Um, but there's a program in Toronto that is a culinary school that gives people with mental health and addiction issues a chance to get a culinary degree for free. Um, yeah. And I've sat in class for a year without a camera, just um, getting to know the program and kind of similar structure like stage following for characters on their journey but it's it's an amazing amazing program and um yeah once once everything's back and running like we're we're definitely filming that yeah listen it's uh it's a it's 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 a big issue um and i know i have a lot of chef pals who've had some really tough challenging times and you know there was a time when some chef's characters would be questioned um and they didn't know at the time is because they were dealing with some mental health issues but they would, you know, they would act out. They would, you know, uh, shout at their, their team members. They would have, you know, little mini meltdowns. And uh, it was hard because chefs were moving so fast. It was hard for them to communicate, you know, not just with their team, but with their own family, what was going on for them. And of course, because it is such a tough industry and a tough world, it's hard for the chef, the leader, for him or her to sit the team down and go, hey, guys, I'm sorry, but... You know, yeah, not, there's not no time, planned, but, yeah. You know, it's hard. So yeah, I think it's great. I think it's a compelling story, Abby. I love that you're telling that story. Um, so thank you for that. Um, 
I, and I say that personally because I lost my mum too young too soon. She was actually oh. a psych psychiatric nurse, um, ended up in the hospital, oh, wow. she was a nurse. So uh, those issues are really, really important and have to be talked about. And Definitely. I love that chefs, I do love that chefs are actually coming out and saying, hey, listen, here's my story. And uh, they're beginning to, to talk, which is so incredibly important. We have some questions Definitely. coming in. So um, Yvonne Fox, uh, so wants to know, obviously this film, this was shot pre-COVID. So mm -hmm. is Muguritz back open for business? Uh, it's been shut down like all others. Uh, what's the story there? Yeah, I mean, I think everyone is just patiently waiting. I think the restaurant industry is really going to change after this. Um, you know, if it continues, and as we see, it's going to continue, um, it's going to be very difficult for restaurants. And I think high-end restaurants especially um, are trying to think of new models. I think fine dining might not be around for an, a year or two. Um, yeah and you'll have to, they'll have to change uh, kind of their business plan and model. Um, so I feel for my friends who own restaurants right now, it is so, so, so difficult um, for them, definitely. Yeah, uh, everyone's having to reinvent the wheel. Um, yeah. No Michelin star chef ever imagined they would be doing food to go, uh, you know, I know. Uh, but they are, yeah. because it's the only way they can survive. Uh, more questions, another one here from Yvonne. How do you foresee the future? Well, you kind of mentioned that really uh, about the future of restaurants. Uh, you kind of answered that question. Um, let me ask you about that situation in Toronto. Uh, is it the same there as it is everywhere else? Or is everyone very shy and timid and uh, about going to a restaurant? And have they opened restaurants for alfresco dining? What's going on in Toronto? Uh, Toronto isn't in the stage yet where they can open restaurants very soon. Um, I think they'll be opening more patios, um, but in the province of Ontario, kind of everywhere else has reopened, but Toronto is just such a big place that they haven't. And as you were saying, they're trying to reinvent the wheel. They're trying to figure out ways of takeout um, and other methods, um, opening, you know, a bodega, opening kind of like a grocery store just to get by yeah. um, and get funding and help with uh, rent and um, overhead costs. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely, it's tough here. It definitely is tough. Uh, yeah. Have you been ordering food to go to support some of your- uh, Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh my God, I'd be so sad if, you know, my favorite Caribbean place up the road closed or um, the Italian place down the road, like these places, and they are closing. That's yeah. the thing. There's restaurants that are, there's this place, Vesuvio, that's um, an Italian um, pizza place that's been around for 70 years and yeah. it had to close its doors. I oh. think, um, you know, if places are thinking like maybe sh we should throw in the towel anyways, this is just kind of like uh, added um, reason to, but um, yeah, it, it very, it is really sad. And then you see the night before it uh, closes, there's like a huge line of support and everything. So um, I think in Toronto, everyone's really working together and uh, yeah. supporting. There's a lot, a lot of support from customers yeah. too. Yeah. Um, I have another question here. Oh, Barbara wanted to know, well, the name of the documentary is Stage, the culinary internship. Thank you to Raphael at home. Uh, last couple of questions. Uh, and we also have one here from John Beckett. Uh, he said he enjoyed Stage, thank you. Uh, he said he wants to know if you watch the Great British Baking Show. If yes, if you enjoyed it, and would you consider <laughs> filming a documentary related to the Great British Baking Show? I haven't, I haven't seen it, but everyone tells me to watch it. Yeah. I feel like because I work so closely to food TV, sometimes mm -hmm. that's like the last thing I want to watch in documentaries or TV is anything related to do with food. Um, but no, I haven't watched it yet, but I hate, everyone keeps telling me I really should. Well, Abby, um, I'll let you have the last word. Uh, the movie, the documentary is Stage, the culinary internship. Uh, tell our friends watching why they should uh, log on and view the documentary. Oh gosh. Um, really, it's just a different way to look at the restaurant industry. It's something new that um, I think the general public doesn't know about these stages, which is the term for a culinary internship um, that they make up. Um, a lot of, well, in Muguritz, they make up a majority of the kitchen and 
Um, it's really about a story about passion and perseverance of why someone would want to work uh, grueling hours in a hot environment, um, you know, knives flying, um, to just want to pursue their dream and be the best chef they can be. Yeah. There's some great movie, great documentary, Abby Ainsworth in Toronto, uh, director, producer uh, behind the film. Uh, it is Stage, the current internship. Uh, Abby, please keep, please, tell, please keep on telling uh, great culinary stories and just great people mm -hmm. stories because uh, you do it so well. I hope lots of people uh, will get a chance to see this. And of course, friends, you can go to raphaelfilm.org. That's raphaelfilm.org uh, to find out when you can see the film and documentary. Abby, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Thanks for taking some time uh, and can't wait to see uh, your next film. We thank you so very, very much. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks so much, Liam. Appreciate Thanks, it. Abby. Okay. Bye. Cheers. Love to Toronto. Mm-hmm. <laughs>